I want you to take everything that you think about when your friend tells you that she's going to a yoga class, and I want you to throw it out. The world of tight yoga pants, perfectly sculpted asses, green juices, and California sunshine has made yoga so irresistibly cool and fresh that now even Indian millennials like your friend have started going to yoga studios. Your spirituality has been distorted, repackaged, and sold back to you. By who? Well, not these guys. No, <laughs> definitely not these guys. These guys are known for this. So which one is true yoga? Well, both, actually. It's just that the former is incomplete and often misappropriated. The former is sexier, but it barely even scratches the surface of the untapped spiritual power underlying yoga and meditation. So my goal today is to actually reveal those Himalayan yogis for the OG superheroes they really are. And specifically, I'm going to take you through how my spiritual practice made me a better actor. And by doing that, my hope is that you might consider how meditation might help you in your personal and professional endeavors. Now, what is yoga? Yoga is the union with the divine or spirit. And Hatha Yoga with its personal asanas, made very popular in the West, is just one way to achieve that union. But there's so many other types of yogas. There's karma yoga, there's bhakti yoga, there's mantra yoga, there's raja yoga, and so on and so forth. I follow the teachings of my guru, Paramahansa Yogananda. He's a pretty cool cat. And I practice Kriya Yoga meditation. And I've been meditating since I was about the age of 12. And today I spend about an hour every morning and evening meditating. In hindsight, I can now track and correlate my spiritual progress to the development of seven professional traits that I use every day to achieve success in my career. Numero uno, concentration. Now, as an actor, it's my job to make my imagination so strong that it momentarily becomes my reality. And that, that requires concentration. Why? Because on screen, you see this. And my job is to make you believe that you've witnessed a very personal, very private moment. What you don't see is this. See, a set has 101 different distractions. From the, the, the boom mic two inches above my head while I'm trying to make out with my co-actors, to the lighting guy in the corner who's itching his crotch. See, I need to be able to see all of them without letting them be in the scene with me. I must protect my imagination. Only then can I begin to act. And that presence of mind comes from yoga. See, we are constantly taking in information through the five senses, processing it, and reacting to it. Meditation showed me how to silence the senses. So I'm no longer expending energy trying to process, but instead channeling it inwards and concentrating on God. Meditation is simply concentration on God. And we can use that same technique of concentration to focus our energies on other things and tune out the unnecessary, whether that's one distracting thought or 100 people on a set. Now, we often say of great artists that they're touched by the divine. Well, that might not be so far from the truth. In fact, some of the greatest cinematic moments were created by actors who had a spark of inspiration in the middle of a scene. It wasn't thought of. It wasn't rehearsed. It just happened. Their instrument was so fine-tuned, so void of ego and doubt, that divine inspiration could flow through them unhindered. They've learned how to trust their intuition. Intuition is where the mind and the heart meet. It is that inner guiding voice that sees beyond logic and passion and sees simply the truth in the path that lies ahead. See, a good actor, right, a good actor will have many ideas on how to shape a performance before the director calls action, but will also, also leave room for those 
spontaneous and intuitive decisions after action is called because that, that is the juicy part. Intuition is where all the best ideas are. But in order to listen to that inner voice, you first must silence all the restless thoughts and feelings. Meditation gave me the stillness to hear that inner voice. Now, I still find myself sometimes getting nervous on set. And usually when I'm nervous on set, the predominant thought is, am I even good at my job? Can I even do this? And doubt germinates in my mind. I start to feel small. I get very scared and it makes it impossible for me to own my space, to take risks. So what happens? My heart starts to pound, my palms start to sweat, I play it safe. I just hope that I'm able to, I just pray that I can just get through my lines. The day I started affirming my own divinity, things started to change. Now, brace yourselves because I'm about to drop some Kanye West level gospel on you guys, okay? Yoga proclaims that divinity lies within us all. We are all God's children and made in his image. So if God created the world, then duh, we're divine creators by nature. We all have incredible divine potential. Yoga taught me how to tap into mine. How? By affirming and experiencing my own divinity every day in meditation, it gave me the confidence to freely experiment in the creative process without judging myself. This is huge. Guys, if there are any artists, you know what I'm talking about. Self-doubt kills creativity. And the opposite of self-doubt is self-belief. The belief in what? The belief that you have what it takes. That what you, what you say, what you think to create, is of such incredible value that thousands, even millions, will want to hear or see it. A delusional thought for someone who sees themselves as a mere human, but commonplace for someone who realizes their divine nature. Belief in your divinity is, in effect, belief in your creative power. Now, I just told you that you guys are divine beings, but don't let that get to your head. See, fame does very tricky things to actors. I mean, we've all heard the story. Stars throwing tantrums, treating people like they're disposable. I mean, in India, actors are treated like cultural demigods, worshipped in temples even. How long are you placed on a pedestal before you really believe that you are above everyone else? That you're not just special. Oh, no. You're better. Ugh, see, now that, that's dangerous. Why is that dangerous? Because ego does not just breed arrogance and narcissism. It also leaves us actors crippled when the affection and the applause is ripped away from us. I've seen this firsthand with my friends. Films flop, tabloids gossip, controversies brew, the nature of the world or Maya is duality or change. Nothing lasts forever, not even stardom, which is why it's so important for actors to be able to maintain their humility and humanity. Yoga taught me how to experience what unites us all, not what makes me better or worse than others. It showed me just how to love thy neighbor as thyself, to be on top of the world while also remembering I'm just like everyone else. Guys, it takes a lot of people to make a film. And we actors, we become the face of their labors. And we're really quick to take the glory. I, I'm not going to deny that. But I can never afford to forget that I'm merely playing a role in the larger drama of life. Now, most of my characters are actually very different from who I am in real life. And at first glance, I don't understand them. I might not even like them. But if I judge my characters with narrow-mindedness, I can never play those characters honestly. And if I view people in my life in a binary fashion, good, evil, smart, stupid, then I'll, my characterization of those people on screen will also be one-dimensional and boring. You see, my job is to see beyond the black and white and to explore the gray of my characters, to find, to find the purity in the villain and the ugliness in the noble. How do you do that? Love, 
compassion for all people, all races, all, all personality types. See, yoga taught me how to even love those who have hurt me. It taught me how to acknowledge their negativity, but also see the underlying pain, or rather, lack of love that is driving their unkind behavior. I believe we're all yearning for love in its many forms. In fact, some of the most vile people are the ones hurting the most. And this lesson has been so important for me as an actor, guys. Forgiveness and compassion have become my window to feeling all the manifestations of people's abundance or lack of love, the root of human emotion. We're all the heroes of our own stories, and no matter how senseless our words or actions, we always find a way to justify them, don't we? There's always a reason that makes sense to us. My job as an actor is to have enough love for my, for my characters to find that reason. Even-mindedness. Have you ever sat through the end credits of a film? Have you? Okay, well, all these people, they don't get along. That's the truth. Okay, on a set, tensions are, are, are very high. People are overworked. They're underslept. There's a lot of friction. There's a lot of cursing. Blame is thrown around constantly, and when it lands on me, it is not fun. What, what's going on here? What, why is his makeup over the top? Oh, you know, see, the thing is... The actor was looking a bit tired. Did you guys not take measurements? You didn't take measurements? Why isn't his costume not fitting? Oh, no, no, we took measurements. It's just that uh, uh, the actor, he got fat. Really, Anisha, is that what happened? I got fat. That's why my shirt sleeve is three inches too short. See, in those moments, I really want to lose it. But yoga has taught me that if I make an emotional decision in those heated moments, I've already lost the battle because it's my peace that goes for a toss. I need to preserve that emotion and energy for my character and scenes. I need to preserve it because when they call action, I'm the one who must perform. I'm the one who might have to cry over my father's death or, or be intimate with my wife. I can't do my job. Even-mindedness is the ability to navigate friction-prone situations from a place of calm and control. Today, I don't let those emotions take that control away. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not the same as apathy. See, I still feel the emotion, but like Neo from The Matrix, it all happens in slow motion. What that means is like a bystander, I can feel the emotion stirring within me, but as separate from me. And so I can choose whether I want to let that emotion pass or respond to it, but not react. The result? I'm as cool as a cucumber, baby. And now when I assert myself, I'm doing it from a place of power, not impulse. And daily meditation has allowed me to be in that Zen place, even when everything around me is going haywire. Now, actors in many ways are the pulse of a set. People don't realize this. Even people on set don't realize this. But the direction team, the lighting team, the camera operators, the hair and makeup department, 24-7, they're basically looking at my face, making sure it looks OK. And subconsciously, whether they know it or not, they're feeding off my energy. An actor can single-handedly change the mood and energy on a set. And it's a responsibility of an actor very few people realize my job extends beyond my performance on camera to my behavior off camera. People often ask me, Uncle, how are you so cheerful all the time? Meditation. Meditation is what helps me become a well of joy and positivity such that no one's words or energies can bring me down. See, this is important. We are all magnets, either pulling people towards our state of mind or being pulled towards their vibratory frequency. Now, have you ever had a friend who, no matter what you do, whatever you guys are doing, this just drains your energy? And you might also know someone that, no matter what you're doing, they always lift your spirits. Chances are that their magnetism was more powerful than yours. And it is that magnetism that makes a star. Not their looks, not even their acting. So what is this elusive magnetism? Or, or X factor, as they call it. It's that prana, 
or life force energy coursing within you. Others call it chi. And yoga science can help unlock that well of energy, like the roar of an ocean with endless depths or resounding om heard at all times. Every time I deeply meditate, I tap into that ever new, ever blissful joy, such that it spills over into my other arenas of life when I'm not meditating, and that, that is a trick. That's why I'm able to be childlike on set, or if you see me on Instagram. I'm always, always excited, always happy, and I can walk into a room and change the mood. For an actor whose job it is to capture people's attention, or a star whose job it is to capture their hearts, this magnetism is instrumental. These seven yogic qualities have helped me tremendously. But I believe they're equally beneficial in other fields, even in, oh, I don't know, medicine. See, some of you guys here, some students, are probably stressed with exams, assignments, uh, family expectations. Meditation might be the answer. It was for these guys. These are some of the great men and women who have applied yoga and meditation in their life and seen the benefits firsthand. See, I think it's time that we stop thinking about our spiritual heritage as outdated or unscientific. My purpose here today is not to promote any one path, but it is to really just urge you to find a spiritual practice and experiment with it like a scientist. Be devoted to it, disciplined with it for six months and see. See what might happen. Don't follow it blindly. Test it for yourself. Apply the scientific process. Don't be the spiritual intellectual satisfied with the mere consumption of Vedic knowledge and TED Talks. And don't be the spiritual butterfly that flies from one path to the next without staying long enough to taste its nectar. Strive for experience-born wisdom and lasting change possible through committing to a practice. That's what I did. That's what I'm trying to do. And, I mean, I still have a long way to go before I master these seven qualities. But one thing I've learned, and one thing I know for sure, yoga is pretty damn cool. Thank you. <laughs>